Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for July 21st, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Junk Food Day, Belgium Independence Day, Comic-Con. For our Buddhist siblings, it is Drukpa Cheshi, or the first sermon of Lord Buddha. It is also Guam Liberation Day. Go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our reading for today is from Exodus chapter 10, starting with verse 21. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards heaven, so that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven, and there was dense darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. People could not see one another, and for three days they could not move from where they were. But all the Israelites had light where they lived. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go, worship Yahweh. Only your flocks and your herds shall remain behind. Even your children may go with you. But Moses said, You must also let us have a sacrifice and burn offerings to sacrifice to Yahweh our God. Our livestock also must go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must choose some of them for the worship of Yahweh our God. And we will not know what to use to worship Yahweh until we arrive there. But Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart. He was unwilling to let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take care that you do not see my face again, for on the day you see my face, you shall die. Moses said, Just as you say, I will never see your face again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, the ninth strike, or the ninth plague against Egypt and Pharaoh. This one is darkness. Not just darkness, though. A darkness that can be felt, whatever that means. There have been lots of sort of theories about what that means, um... Uh, there's there's an author whose name is it Cliff something um, who sort of describes it as this uh, sort of a darkness that you light a lamp and the and the light from the lamp just sort of stays right there it doesn't actually spread out. Um, I've always thought of it or not always but I, I think of it sometimes as maybe yes darkness but also this sort of emotional darkness this depression this gloom that falls over everyone um because there's this note that nobody can move from where they are which is potentially a physical thing but also could be an emotional thing that they're just stuck this is big this is truly sort of um We might even call it psychological warfare. And I have mentioned that there have been sort of like this, there's this been this recurring theme, as subtle as it might be, especially for those of us who are not hugely familiar with the Egyptian culture. But with each of these plagues, there's there's a very clear sort of, it's the battle of the gods um, is the motif here, which is, is very much a motif for all battles in the ancient world. All battles in the ancient world would be considered to be the, the sort of a physical manifestation of a divine uh, conflict. And so just as God had the Yahweh God, the God of the Hebrews, 
has been victorious over the Nile and and Hecate, um, the the frog god, and you know the god of crops and the god of uh, animals and the you know like all of these sorts of things. Here, this final of kind of this set three sets of three. Not the final blow, but the final of this sort of set. Plague number 10 is is its own thing. It's very distinct. Um, this is a very clear message. Victory over light and the sun itself. Now, you don't have to know a huge amount about Egyptian mythology to know that the chief god for the, uh, the for the Egyptian people is Ra, the sun god. And so, very specifically, I think there is this you know this blotting out of the sun, and the sun now has no effect on the Egyptian people. They are surrounded by dark. This darkness that can be felt. They have suffered through all sorts of things because of name, chiefly, namely because of Pharaoh's hard heartedness and hubris. Now they're experiencing this three days of just sitting in the same place. Pharaoh calls Moses and Aaron and says, just go, just leave. You know what? You can take your children. You can take everybody. Just leave your livestock. Again, he's still trying to bargain. He's still trying to say, trying to give them some sort of toehold. Partially also, you might remember that most of the livestock of Egypt has been wiped out by either pestilence or the, the um, hail. Neither of those affected the people of the Hebrews, and so all of their livestock is fine. And so Pharaoh is wanting to not let go of this stock that is there. And Moses says, no, that's not acceptable. I've already told you that our sacrifices are going to be burnt offerings. They're going to be animal sacrifices. And we're not sure which ones need to be sacrificed until we get there. We're going to get instructions when we get there, which is in fact correct. So we have to bring them with us. And Pharaoh, again, will not go, right? Pharaoh must have some sort of control. He's not he does not allow himself to let the people go and just let them go. He brings his own people to financial ruin and darkness that is felt. Because he can't let go of any control. And so instead, Pharaoh answers Moses with a curse. If I see your face again, I will kill you. Get out of my face. Go away. I don't want to talk to you ever again. Moses says, fine, I'll never see your face again. We'll see where that goes. But we see here a picture of a leader and a nation that is truly brought to its knees. There is no question in the contest between Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, and all of the gods of Egypt, even their most highest praised Ra sun god. This God of the desert, this God of a nomadic people, people enslaved, is shown to be the Lord of Lord and the King of King.
And it is the empire, the cities, the pharaohs own hubris that brings them down. So when we are overwhelmed with darkness, and there's darkness that we can feel and we're overcome with depression, anxiety, all of these emotions, sometimes it's our own need for control that shuts us off from relief. Now, of course, depression is a, a deeply complex issue. There's lots of things going on. A lot of it is emotional and trauma that we need to deal with and talk through and consider to seek mental health professionals. Some of it is chemical. Some of it is, I think, spiritual. And yet part of the story of God overcoming that light, bringing a darkness that can be felt, is that God even has control over that. There's work we need to do. There's, there's trauma that we need to work through. There are things that we need to consider, but God is also in control and letting go of that for ourselves can be a way to see ourselves through that dark. to let go of the, the control that we think we might have. Recognizing that God alone is sovereign. Recognizing that there may be some hard things that we need to do, but the darkness can be overcome. It is not uh, consequ not consequential. Um, coincidence. It's not a coincidence that this last of these plagues connects directly to the first day of creation. We have seen the decreation of Egypt, and in many ways, it's sort of the the unraveling backwards of the creation narrative. We remember God's being over the dark, chaotic waters that perhaps darkness that could be felt. And that God brings light. And then that light is balanced with darkness. And so there is... The darkness does not just go away, but it is maintained in control. It is given a purpose. A plan. And the darkness does not last forever. There is a shift from dark to light. Back again. So in our darkest days, we know that the light is there and is coming. I invite you to reflect upon these things. Consider the darkness that you have experienced or maybe are experiencing. What are those bits of control that you might be holding on to and are they actually cutting you off from healing are you holding on to some responses born out of trauma that actually don't help you do what you are called to do to find healing Take some time to reflect in journal, in prayer, in meditation. And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy.
and pray. Give us your peace, O God, that we may rejoice in the goodness of others, uh, goodness to us, to all your children, and to be thankful for your love revealed in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the faithful witness of Christian people. the vast universe of galaxies and stars. Friends with whom we have shared. The courage to be bold disciples. the labors of those who have served us. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for modern solutions, for study of Brain chemistry helps for mental health professionals. For the ability to work through issues. Give us your peace, O God, that we may be confident of your care for us and all your children as we remember the needs of others. Especially we pray for Episcopal and Methodist churches. Racial justice and reconciliation. Those who are poor or vulnerable. Agents of caring and relief. Help for those who are abused or neglected. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for the family of Mel, who passed away this last week. For Carol, who fell and broke her nose. For Gwen, who's recovering from shoulder surgery. For Laurel, at the death of her father. And for her mother, who fell and broke her wrist. For the birth of Elle, John and Linda's great-granddaughter. For Mary, a friend of Linda. For Laura, sister of Cameron. For Cameron and Brianna, who have celebrated their first wedding anniversary and prayers in the process of buying a house. For Cullen, who asked for prayer in spiritual conflict and for some unspoken requests. God, our shepherd, you have brought us this day to a time of reflection and rest. Calm our souls and refresh us with your peace. Give us close to Christ and draw us closer to one another in the bonds of wondrous love. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now may the Lord, who is our peace, give us peace at all times and every way. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for our daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. You can watch this daily prayer on YouTube, you can listen to it on Spotify, and you can get a uh, email with both of them on Substack. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.